All right, guys, so we're heading into our last month of school, and soon enough we'll be able to talk about this stuff in the past. Past is kind of what we're talking about today, so let's get started. But first, so we just got that stimulus check. Looking for what to do with it. Everybody else is buying big TVs, so. What about an inflatable dinosaur costume? I love those. No. What about one of those Nicolas Cage pillows? No. It's a thing. Look it up. What about an inflatable zip-up hoodie so you just inflate the pillow right there? Uh-uh. All right. So hear me out. It's discontinued, so it's a collectible. A discontinued Lego Millennium Falcon. Expensive. Uh, what about a dog? We talked about this. Okay. What about a tiger? No way. Worth a shot. I've seen these in the game stores. It's a life size Batman. Don't even think about it. How does she do that? I promise you we didn't buy any of that. Before we get started with today's lesson, we are gonna go over activity A uh, from last week. All right, so remember the instructions say, give brief Latin answers to these questions. A couple of you, you answered them in English. Make sure we read the directions. Okay, number one asks, who was a Roman general? And in the Paragraph that we had, the Roman general that was mentioned was Julius Caesar, okay, in Latin, Iulius Caesar. You could have J there if you wanted to. Um, different types of Latin spelled it differently. Um, so Julius Caesar is our answer in Latin, Iulius Caesar. Um, number two, what kind of army did he have? And in the paragraph, it was talking about him having a strong army, okay? So in that sentence, Julius Caesar has a strong army, Okay, army is technically a direct object, so our adjective should also be in the accusative case as well. And it remember, army, yes, it means there's more people in it. It's not just one, um, but grammatically, it is used as a singular noun. So grammatically, we are using singular um, adjective there as well. So that is why we have the em there as the ending. It's accusative and it is singular. Um, number three, what did Caesar's army do? And this one is obviously a little bit longer. Um, obviously, if you had uh, Caesar's army fought, okay, Caesar's army conquered, yes, but lots of armies did that. What specifically did his army do? Um, and in this one, there'll be an understood subject by referring to Caesar's army. You could repeat Caesar's army in your sentence if you wanted to, but we could just say they, and remember in Latin that is understood. We don't actually put that in the sentence. Usually our verb goes at the end, and we're talking about the army again. So again, grammatically, it's a singular noun, so we use a singular verb, okay? Hence, it's just a T and not an NT. And then we have it being imperfect or past, so we have the minke bot. So they conquered, a part of Europe, okay, is what we're saying here. Uh, Europe being possessive technically here, um, this working as the direct object, a part of Europe as the accusative, partem, ergo by, remember possessive, and then magnam, a large part, remember large describing part, not Europe, okay, so it needs to describe partem, not Europa, ergo by, and then it also needs to be accusative, and this is feminine, so we have the feminine accusative ending. Remember, it is singular because part is singular. So, magnam, partem, europai, winke, bot. Technically, you could technically have the verb at the beginning. And then, for our English sakes and purposes, that would make the most sense because then our understood subject would go right there. However, remember, in Latin, they usually put the verbs at the end for action verbs. 
And then number four, uh, what do many countries in Europe still do? Uh, some of you put conquered or winke bot. There's not really a lot of conquering really going on in much of Europe today, but there is still fighting going on. So a bit more um, specific uh, conquering. Again, not many countries are in the conquering business anymore. That hasn't really happened much since World War II, but they still fight, okay? So pugnacht. And remember it is plural, so we have NT to make our verb plural. Now numbers five through six. All right, so number five, what wars do books of history tell about? Um, and in the paragraph, it mentioned that they told about old and recent wars. Okay, so about ancient or old and recent wars. Okay, wars has to be plural. This um, has to, both of these have to agree with this one and it being um, plural and it being of object of the preposition. Um, so that's why we have our endings there. Um, if you just had of ancient wars or of old wars, that's technically fine. But in the paragraph, it said ancient or old and recent wars. Number six, will there be future wars? Yes, um, the paragraph says that as well. It's an, always an ongoing thing, unfortunately, whether we hear much about it or not, it is still happening. Number six, so we could answer that just ita were, um, but if we want to be more specific in our Latin answer, ita were, werunt. Okay, yes, there will be. Werunt meaning there will be. You could say just werunt. If you really wanted to, there will be. Um, and that would be fine as well. All right, so I know some of you had concerns this past week about these verb tenses and things, um, but don't worry, we're walking through it slowly. Um, they just try to throw a bunch of stuff at you in last week's lesson. Um, we're gonna break things down this week. Uh, but first, we have to make sure that we know what we're talking about when it comes to our English grammar, because the book obviously is gonna explain stuff on the premise that we actually know English grammar. Hopefully, we do. Um, some of it may be a little bit uh, new toward, to you, um, relatively anyways. Um, some of it, we should have no, been knowing some of these helping verbs and auxiliaries and things for a while. Um, but regular versus irregular, we have to cover that first. Um, we're on page 185 in the textbook underneath regular and irregular verbs. Verbs in both Latin and English are classified as regular or irregular. Walk is regular because its past form ends in ed. Run is irregular because its past form does not end in ed. Also irregular is the be verb with such forms as am, is, are, was, and were. Um, so let's go ahead and put that there. For now, we have walk is what they mentioned, okay? Why is walk an irregular verb? Well, in order to make it pass, all you have to do is add the ed, okay? We do run, which they say is an irregular verb, okay? If we want to make it past, we do not just add an ed or the other uh, consonant ed, run. Run is not a word. If you did not know that by now, maybe you should not be in Latin. Maybe you should be in fourth grade English class, okay? Past tense of run is ran, not run not ran, okay? So you're not just add the ed, meaning it is irregular, okay? You have to change the spelling of the word for the past tense. Here you just add the ed, okay? It also says that um, the be verb, okay, is irregular because obviously, if I'm gonna make this past tense, I don't add ed, be, be ed, okay? But there's other forms of the be verb um, that change with every tense, with every form that it goes through. Um, and then also based on first person, second person, third person, it changes as well. So that is definitely an irregular verb, the be verb. Um, most of the action verbs that we deal with are regular. Um, not all, but most of them. And this is where, again, some people think that English is one of the hardest languages to learn. Um, like if, they, uh, if it was not their first language. 
um, because we have so many irregular things that other languages don't. For instance, in Latin, we do not have very many irregular verbs, okay? Most of our verbs in Latin are regular, which means that we just change the ending, okay? Like what we saw in last week's lesson where we add the VA, okay, and we'll talk about that more so today. Um, but more of Latin verbs are similar to this than this right here. Um, it says, you will learn about Latin irregular verbs one at a time. So there's not as many compared to Latin regular verbs. The one you've worked with so far is sum, which is a Latin word for our English be verb. Est is a form of sum. In the paragraph you just read about, uh, in the paragraph you just read about wars, erat and erunt are other tenses of est. Using context help, Tell me the English meanings of a rot and a root as you reread the Latin paragraph called the la. If you need to do that, go ahead and do so. We did kind of answer these questions last week. Flora says a rot must mean was because it is in a sentence about Julius Caesar. It's not around anymore, so obviously we're talking about the past. So she says it's was. A root is in a sentence about the future. Remember Futuro is in that sentence. So it means will be. And then the teacher says, excellent use of context to solve problems. Going to use a little bit of that um, as we continue learning about how to use context even more. All right, so regular verbs versus irregular verbs, more regular verbs in Latin than irregular verbs by far. So this is where we're going to have to know a little bit more of our English grammar um, heading into what we're now learning for Latin grammar. Um, Stuff in the past has been pretty simple stuff, elementary stuff. This is a little bit more uh, technical. Um, on page 185, underneath the imperfect tense of regular verbs, the Latin imperfect tense is not exactly equivalent to the English past tense. It's called the imperfect tense because it shows incomplete action. Go ahead and highlight that phrase right there. Or action that continued in the past. The English past tense can show either complete or incomplete action. The grammatical term perfect means complete and imperfect means not complete. To express the idea of incomplete action in English, we can say he was walking, he used to walk, he would walk, he did walk, or he walked. The English verb form that expresses past continuous action is called past progressive, which we won't get into too much uh, right now. So again, that paragraph, kind of confusing. Let's go ahead and break down, first of all, what we know based off of English grammar. So if we were to use our regular verb walk, okay, in the present tense, and we're gonna just put in uh, he in here for now to help us um, with the verbs. Uh, he walks, okay, is one way we can say it in the present tense. He is walking. And then there is another one that we could see, and that is using a helping verb. He does walk. Okay. All of those are present tense ways to say walk. Okay. And the imperfect. Okay. So again, Latin doesn't technically have a past tense, but we use the imperfect in its place, but doesn't really solve all of the issues but it will work, okay, for us. We say, he walked, he was walking, and using similar helping verb, he did walk, okay? Um, technically not past, but in a sense, that's what we got um, for Latin. Um, imperfect, it can mean things in the past, but past could mean in English more than just imperfect. Okay, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, but let's move on to uh, future for now. Again, we're working with the verb walk. Okay, so for future, if he is going to walk, make it easy. Instead of just saying he is going to walk, obviously. 
he will, sorry, not work. Whew. He will walk. Maybe walking is worth doing, I guess. Um, and then the last one, and we're going to see how this is different. Okay. So your book tells you that imperfect means it's an incomplete action. The action is not complete. Perfect means that the action has been completed. Okay, so if we look at this, and again, for us, it doesn't always make sense because if something happened past, of course, it's completed. But grammatically, technically, it's not. Okay, so he walked, okay, and we'll see where exactly we could still use that not being a continuing thing uh, with imperfect, okay? And then past perfect, he had walked, okay? He had done this, so he had walked already, whereas he walked, he was walking, he did walk, okay? Imperfect, past perfect. We don't use in Latin a past tense. So in English, we have past, present, future, okay? In Latin, doesn't work that way, okay? Imperfect, present, future, okay? Imperfect kind of takes the place of past, but again, there's some things that will not be imperfect that are past, okay? Just because the action is not completed. Go ahead and flip the page and we will discuss the difference between perfect and imperfect a little bit more. But at the top of page 186, in the paragraph about wars, find two words that indicate continued action in the past. Verbs other than erupt. What are the last three letters of those two verbs? Victor says, well, in the sentences about Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar's army, I see habebat and winkebat. The last three letters are B-A-T. Yes, the T is the inflection you have been using to show that the subject is a singular noun or pronoun. So to help us out, okay, when we see ambulat, with the T ending, we know that, okay, we haven't learned how I'm doing in action yet. We're talking about something else during the action. And that is a singular um, subject, okay, because it's just a T. If it is plural, in order to change our verb into agreeing with it and being plural, we add the N, okay, in most cases to make it plural, to make our verb plural. Abulant, okay, so difference being uh, he walks, okay, to they walk, right? In uh, English, a lot of times when we have a singular verb, we have an S ending, and then when we have plural, we remove the S. So it's kind of opposite of nouns a little bit. Um, with this thing, with verbs in Latin, we have ambulat, if it's singular, and so walks, but then we take away the S in English, but in Latin, we typically add the N to make it plural. Back to the reading on page 186, um, Magister's second line there. When we translate, the subjects are he and army. Right before the inflection T are two letters that we call a tense sign. This tense sign tells us that the verb is in the imperfect tense of a regular verb. And then he asks, how is it Let's use one of the examples that he gave right there. Okay, but, okay, so T being there, we know that our subject is singular. And then he says again, right before the inflection T are two letters that are the tense sign. Okay, so this is our inflection. This is our tense sign telling us what tense it's in. Okay, so we know who is kind of doing the action. Now we're wanting to know when the action was done or when it was completed. Um, and the BA, Okay, which is Claire's answer there, right there. Okay, VA, that's our tense sign. Um, technically, VA should be a long A if it does not have a T or NT after it. Okay, so let's pretend, okay, we haven't gotten to this yet, but let's pretend that instead of a T, it's an S. Okay, then it would be a long A. But a long A does not precede a T or, whoop, K, 
catch Mr. Aristotle. It does not precede a T or an NT, so it is not a long A. Um, said, he says right there, but the vowel has been shortened in those verbs because of the following consonant. Vowels are never long before the, cons before the inflections T and NT. Go ahead and highlight that, underline that. Um, we're at Magister's second um, saying there, right before translation of verbs in the imperfect tense, his last sentence, vowels are never long before the inflections T and NT. So our vowel in BA is short. If it was an S, that's not a T or an NT, so it would be long. Um, this tense sign for the imperfect tense is used in regular verbs. So we know the difference between regular and irregular, hopefully now. We covered that at the beginning. Um, walk, is that a regular or irregular verb? Hopefully we said it is a regular verb because you can add an ED to that and make it past. Um, run is not a regular verb because you cannot just add ed to it. Um, let's review the possible translations for the imperfect tense. What are the possible translations of ambulabat? Okay, so not ambulat, okay, which would be just present tense, but ambulabat, okay. Are this is what we are used to saying, okay? But before the T, I have to change my tense sign. Okay, so I have my inflection, but I also have my tense sign right before the inflection, which is the VA. The VA make, lets me know that it is imperfect. Um, so, this could mean he was walking, he used to walk, he would walk, he did walk, or he walked. He walked does not show continued action, but this is an acceptable translation if the context makes it clear that the action is continued. So, if I wanted to say he walked, technically it would work for imperfect, okay? It does not necessarily show that it is completed action which is what imperfect is, meaning the action is not completed. Okay, however, based on context, it could show that it is completed, and that's what he's talking about here. So if an action has not been completed, he walked, he was walking, he did walk, we don't know if he's still walking or not. Okay, we don't know if he's done walking, but it sure looks like he was walking in the past, right? And we don't know if he finished. This, however, he had walked is telling us that he's finished, okay? It is con no longer continued, okay? So it is perfect, it is done. These could still be continuing, hence they are not perfect, they are imperfect. Perfect meaning done, imperfect meaning not done, okay? Um, so we see, again, Ambulabat is our example there. He walked is what we're talking about here. And based on context could be um, imperfect, could not be. For example, we could, show continued action by saying last year he walked to school every day. So there we see our phrase, he walked, okay? If we say this morning he walked to school, the context shows completed action. Because this morning, okay, they're talking about this morning being in the past, this morning is done and over with. So that means that if he was walking to school this morning and this morning isn't here anymore, then that is completed, okay? So then it is past. However, if we were to say last year he walked to school every day, okay, he walked to school every day, every day is still happening, okay, it's continued action. However, this morning is done. Um, Latin has another tense to show completed action, and you will learn about that later, okay, so we'll learn about this later. Right now, we're just dealing with this, and we've already worked with present tense, or with present tense and imperfect, the closest thing that Latin has to past tense. In activity B, you will practice with present and imperfect verb forms. And this is going to help us, so stay tuned for us going over these. Um, in activity C, you will translate sentences into English, being careful to use the correct forms. We will not do activity D. We will just do activity B and activity C. Again, so if this is still kind of confusing to you, we will get this down, hopefully, in the activities. And if we still are struggling, let me know and I will reach out to you and we can have some form of communication to help you along the way. 
because some of us, we've just been kind of coasting through and we've just been putting random answers down, things that are just close um, to the answer. Um, and that may be getting you by for now, but it will not um, in the near future. So make sure that you are understanding the concept and not just putting answers down. Follow along as we do the activities. I'm doing some of these with you in this video, and yet some of you are still getting the same answers wrong when you are turning these in. All right, so activity B, give one of the possible translations for each verb. Then for numbers one through four, change the Latin verb to the imperfect tense, plural number, and translate the verb that you write. For numbers five through eight, change the imperfect tense, plural number, to the present tense, singular number, and translate the verb that you write. Okay, so again, seems a little confusing, we're gonna go through it slowly. Um, basically one through four, um, once you get done with those, then number five through eight is the opposite order, okay? And we'll, we'll understand what that means in a second. Number one. Okay, first of all, what does this verb mean? Hopefully you are saying to shout, okay? Hopefully you're shouting it out. Um, so we would say he... Shouts. Remember, it is singular, okay? He shouts. And so that is the first part of our answer, okay? There technically will be three answers in every blank, okay? So we have he shouts. Then it says, for numbers one through four, change the Latin verb to the imperfect tense, okay? Um, plural number, and then translate that verb, okay? So if I'm going to change this, to imperfect, and I'm going to change it to plural. Okay, there's two changes I have to make to this verb. Okay. Okay, my ending, okay, is going from a T to an NT because it's gonna be plural. And then I also have to change it to the imperfect tense. And what is the tense sign for imperfect? Okay, that'd be A. So, A and then making it plural and T. Remember, I do not have long vowels before the endings, okay? Um, so this one, I already had the long A here, did not hear because the T. However, this one does not come before a T or NT, so it will still be long. This one comes before an NT, so it's short, okay? So, clamabat, okay? So now I've changed it from present singular to imperfect and then plural, okay? Changing it from present to imperfect, changing it from singular to plural. So I did all that just by adding B-A-N-T, okay? B-A-N, sorry, because T was right there. So that's answer number two for that one. And now I have to translate what that means. Okay, so remember it's plural and it is imperfect. So instead of he, maybe I can use they, all right, because that's plural. And then for imperfect, a form of um, shout, um, we could use, if we were to make that plural, They were shouting. Now remember, I could technically say they shouted, okay? However, based on context, remember, that could be a completed action. We would have to know what the rest of the sentence is saying. Um, if it was talking about this morning they shouted, okay, that's completed action. It would not work as imperfect, okay? But if I'm saying um, through the night, they shouted, okay, that could mean that it is an ongoing thing. So it could be shouted in that instance. But just to make it simple, okay, I could say they shouted, okay, or I could say they were shouting, okay, both technically being imperfect. Number two, we've already kind of gone through, because um, that was our sample word for a lot of this. Um, so it would be he walks, that's what ambulat means, okay? 
it is singular and it is present. If I'm going to change it to imperfect, okay, so let's go blocks, okay, that's present, and then I am putting it possessive, sorry, not possessive, plural, and it is imperfect, and I'm saying they were walking, and that would all go in the blank for number two, okay? Make sure you are separating your answers somehow, okay? Do not just run them all through, make them look like they run together. Um, so remember, you will have three different things for every blank, okay? One through four, I am putting, everything's going to be in a singular form, and it's going to be in the present tense. Okay, so my translation first should be singular and in the present tense. Then for numbers one through four, I am changing it to imperfect and put plural. Okay, so my ending should change and my tense should and my tense sign should be there. Okay. And then I am translating the imperfect plural. Okay, that's what I'm doing there. Okay, so that these would be my answers for one and answers for number two. Okay, if you get those wrong, I know you're not watching the videos. We'll skip down to number five when they are switching the process here. Okay. So instead of starting with present imperfect, or sorry, not present imperfect. So instead of starting with present singular, they are starting with the imperfect plural. So number five, okay, I have right here, it is imperfect and it is plural, right? So I might have they were swimming, okay? That would be my translation here. They were swimming, okay? okay it's plural, and it is imperfect. Okay, answer number one. Now I have to go opposite of this, okay? So where numbers one through four, we're starting out with present singular. And these are starting out in imperfect plural, so I'm going back to present singular. So that means I have to remove my imperfect tense, and I have to remove my plural inflection and make sure that it is singular. So my answer would simply be, I talked. Okay, so now it is singular, and it is also in the present tense. Now I have to translate that, because I'm gonna have three answers for this one as well. And it's simply, he swims. It is singular and it is in the present tense. So numbers one through four, okay, make sure we are doing those in the correct order. We are going from the present singular to imperfect plural. And then numbers five through eight, we start out with the imperfect plural and we are going to the present singular. Make sure we translate both of them into English as well. Um, activity C, a little bit more to this. So this one says translate each sentence and sentences one through five translate into English and sentences six through eight translate into Latin. Hopefully that's pretty obvious to us though. Number one, magister magnum librum habet. Okay, so my subject is the teacher. And I'm probably going to go with my verb next, which is habet. Okay, that is the present form, and it is singular. Ooh, I'm saying it in Latin. The teacher has, and what does the teacher have? The teacher has a book, but it is a large book. So we have magnum, librum, meaning a large book. 
Um, number two, I will not do on the board, okay, but make sure you are looking at the verb and you're looking at the tense sign, whether it has VA or not. If it does not, it is present tense. If it does, it is imperfect. And then make sure that you know whether or not your subject is singular or plural. And you can tell that by either looking at the subject or by looking at the verb. And for number two, our verb is just T. So we should know that our subject is singular. And I will give you a hint for number two. The subject is not student or pupils. Okay, your subject is understood. Okay, so we are talking about, probably if we're going based off context, we're probably talking about the teacher here. Okay, teacher cannot be understood. Your pronoun should be he or she. And then make sure you are using the correct verb and translating the rest accordingly. Go ahead and skip down to number six. The pupils have a good teacher. Don't worry, I did not put this in the book, so if you don't agree with it, that is okay. The pupils have a good teacher. So my subject being the pupils, but the pupils is plural. So make sure I use the plural form of discipulus, and that would be in the nominative form. Okay. And then I have to have my verb probably going at the end because I have a direct object here. Okay, the pupils have what? They have a teacher. They have a good, they happen to have a good teacher. If I'm going to use magistrum, so a male teacher, then my um, adjective would be bonum. Okay, that way it agrees both in case, which would be accusative, and also it is masculine. And then my verb being there at the end. Okay, we're talking about the pupils here, so it is plural, so my verb also needs to be plural. So instead of habet, we have habent. Okay, making that plural verb. If your teacher is feminine, however, Obviously, we're going to have a difference there. Oh, you're strong. And then my adjective would be changed accordingly as well because now it instead would be masculine and it's feminine and it would be bonum instead of bonum. Number seven, the teacher was teaching about Rome. So now we have an instance of putting a verb in the imperfect tense. Okay, so make sure when you use your verb there that you have the ending um, BA in there. And then make sure you use correctly either singular or plural verb there as well. So remember, when we add BA to a verb, and this may help some of us now, okay? Um, when we add BA to a verb, let's pretend this is our verb, okay? So if I am going to put in this tense sign, this imperfect tense sign, BA. Remember, it goes before the inflection. Is my inflection ET or is my inflection just the T? My inflection is just the T. So if I'm going to change it to imperfect, that's where I'm going to be putting my tense sign, right there. So it should change. that right there. Okay, so don't get, I put in my imperfect tense sign to make it imperfect. It goes before the inflection. Okay, don't get bot. Again, if you have any questions, let me know before you turn in the activity saying I didn't get this and then you had already completed it. Completed it. Okay, if you need the help, ask us before you turn it in. Um, that way we, it can be more of a help during the learning process as opposed to being done with it and then trying to get the help. So that's it for the homework. Um, just activity B and activity C and we got a pretty good head start on both of those. Um, if you need the extra help, let us know, okay? Um, we're here to help you, not just to turn stuff into. Um, if uh, you are struggling on, during the process of the homework, let us know instead of just at the end. Um, boys, you have a vocab quiz next week, okay, over page 180. It's not this week because we have a couple of activities to do this week. 
Uh, so next week we will have the quiz. So if you want to start preparing for that, it might be a little wise to do so since we have not had a vocab quiz in about a month. Um, and we have about a month left of school. So not a lot of time to put in um, some more grades. Okay, let's keep up with our work. That way we don't have to do all of it there at the end. Um, if you can, and again, if you're struggling for some reason, let us know. Again, we're here to help, not just to turn stuff into. Remember, we are praying for you guys. Um, hope you guys, are, again, are staying uh, safe, staying healthy, being smart, okay? Using our time wisely. Again, we don't want to come out of this thing and just be shocked that the world's still moving, okay? We, we have to be ready to hit the ground running when everything opens back up and not just wake up out of hibernation, okay? We need to be using our time wisely. Um, otherwise, when we get back to school next next school year, it's just gonna be seen even worse than any other summer before just because we've been so much lazier than we are usual summers. Um, and some of you, I've heard you guys are doing pretty good. You're going out and you're doing as much things as possible um, safely. Um, keep up, just staying busy. I know some of us, we have um, a hard time just sitting still, okay? But and then others, we have a hard time going out and doing anything we don't have to. Um, doesn't mean you have to go out to a place to do something. You just go for a walk. Um, just stay active, okay? That's what we're aiming for is just to keep moving, not just to stay sedentary, okay? But to keep moving. So remember, we're praying for you guys. Hope you guys are doing well. See you guys next week.